What's the word, y'all? Okay, we got a trade, and I got to talk about it. I'm going to try my very hardest to one-take this one, but something I have not kept y'all in a loop on, my lungs are not as good as they used to be, is we are saying that it's 25 years old, but it is a fact. So that's one of the reasons why you don't see me one-take videos anymore is because I don't have the breath to actually do it. I'm going to try my hardest because Rudy Gobert just got traded. It felt inevitable, but I was still kind of skeptical that they were going to do it. This backcourt, not backcourt, this pairing of Donovan Mitchell and Rudy Gobert has been together for some years. They've been good enough to make the playoffs, uh, but, but, but that's just it. You know, they might have had some off-court issues that they kind of swept under the rug, especially when we got to the point where Rudy Gobert is touching all the, all the microphones and gave Donovan Mitchell to your dig. Um, but but it felt like since this is a small market team, we got two all star players. We might just run it back because that basically guarantees us a playoff spot every single season. But over the last couple of years, we've seen disappointment after disappointment after disappointment once we got to the playoffs and they did it. Oh, my God. This is a trade and it is a huge trade. It is Malik Beasley, Patrick Beverly, Jared Vanderbilt, Balmero, the 2022 overall pick in this year's draft, Walker Kessler, four first-round picks. Three of them are unprotected, 2023, 2025, 2027, and then in 2029, it's top five protected. What the heck? History is repeating itself again, ladies and gentlemen. We talked about a couple days ago how I, we were talking about um the DeJounte Murray trade. In that video, I was talking about how it doesn't happen often that we see teams give up multiple unprotected picks. Well, we saw it, we're seeing it twice right now. We're seeing it for the second time in a week's time. And Kevin Durant is going to get traded eventually. At least that's, that's what we think. Rudy got basically five first-round picks because Walker Kessler ain't played just yet, and he was just drafted last week. So five first-round picks for Rudy Gobert, and people had the nerve to drop trades that had uh, KD getting traded to the Celtics, and there was only two first-round picks involved. No, KD is getting seven of them things. We talking swaps, we talking unprotected, all of that. Either way, Rudy Gobert is now a Minnesota Timberwolf. Whoa. My initial response to this, of course, it, it came out, um, that the trade was happening. Brian Windhorst had it first on TV and people laughed at him. I, guess, I don't really know the story. I don't really watch TV like that. But I just remember when the trade happened, everybody kept saying Windhorst uh, got it first. Either way, the trade happened and I was excited because uh, it is well documented that I'm like one of the biggest Rudy Gobert fans on the platform, whether it be on this channel, on my podcast, anywhere I've talked about basketball, I've been very high on Rudy Gobert because I believe his deterrence at the rim is all time great. Rudy Gobert is a bona fide Hall of Famer, whether you like it or not, right? Um, so it's well documented that I am a big Rudy Gobert fan, and I've been waiting for the day that he gets traded to a different organization so we can see him in a different role, not in a different role because rim protection is rim protection, but in a different scenario where it's not him and for the people that don't play any defense. And you're kind of getting that with the Minnesota Timberwolves. Yes, they trade away Patrick Beverly and Jared Vanderbilt, um, who were like two of the best defenders on the Minnesota Timberwolves this year. But they still only had a 24th, 25th ranked defense before this. And Rudy Gobert by himself is a bona fide top five defense. So now we get to see that. Again, back, like I'm rambling. It's one take, whatever. Rudy Gobert is my one of my favorite centers in all of basketball. He, he has been my favorite for a long time. I do not understand, and maybe this will come out, who the hell the Minnesota Timberwolves were bidding against, right? Like I said, it felt relatively inevitable that either Rudy or Donovan were going to be traded. And it came out that the Utah Jazz are trying to retool around um, Donovan Mitchell. They don't plan to trade him. We're going to talk about that in a minute because that's even weird to me. Who I know that the Bulls are interested. The Bulls don't have anything close to this. Not even close. The Bulls have like two first-round picks that they could throw. You basically gave up five. So my question is, who are you bidding against to give them Malik Beasley, rotational player, Patrick Beverly, NBA starter, Jerry Vanderbilt, NBA starter, and then five first-round picks. Balmero ain't really played, but he was a first-round pick too. So counted six first-round picks. I don't know who they, were, who they were bidding against, but they got their guy. Now, I'm looking at this roster. Um, you got a big, th you're, you got a big three basically. Um, you got Carlton Towns who just signed his extension, max extension. You got Rudy Gobert who's under contract for the next four or five seasons, and now you got Anthony Edwards who's going to be up for an extension next season. I'm just going to assume that it's going to be the max. You still have D'Angelo Russell who kept him in a trade, and then the rest you got like um, Kyle Anderson you just picked up, Torian Prince is back. You got some pieces over there, but does this team immediately become a championship contender? Immediately, I don't think they do. It all relies. On, on that guy Kermit, that guy, that guy, um, that that terrorized Bo Cruz for two hours in the movie, it is all on Anthony Edwards's back. This team's now and its future is dependent on whether or not Anthony Edwards can blossom into superstardom, and I don't put it past him. 
So yeah, it probably wasn't, not probably, it, it, it was an overpay. But you might look back on and be like, we don't really give a damn because if Anthony Edwards can turn into the player that they believe, and a lot of people believe he can be, then it's fine. We have a legitimate big three with a, just, a, just a small, I mean, a very small amount of wiggle room for the, for the future. But still, five first-round picks is a haul. And to have three of them be completely unprotected is a little bit scary. I was just listening to Zach Lowe's podcast, him and... um. Oh my God, who was he on with? I got I got to give my my respect where it's due. So let me hold on. Let me go ahead and try to figure out who this was and ramble a little bit. But what they were talking about, and and the guy came out and he looked five years ago, five years ago power rankings, right? It had the Minnesota Timberwolves in there because they just had Jimmy Butler. It had the Washington Wizards in there because Bradley Beal was young and Otto Porter was young and John Wall was in his prime. And I'm I'm just saying that to say it was Kevin Pelton, by the way. Shout out to Kevin Pelton. A lot of things can change in five years' time. You gave up a pick that is seven years in the future. That's five years in the future. And we see with the Brooklyn Nets, in three years, things can be completely different. So I I know it's scary Minnesota Timberwolves fans to give up all those picks, but y'all been in the realm of mediocrity since Kevin Garnett left. This right here could put y'all to the point where we're not just a playing team and, and getting into the playoffs. We are like legitimate one of the top four or five seeds in the Western Conference with, with the possibility of getting better depending on Anthony Edwards. People are like, oh, man. Um, oh, these are all my first day reactions. I should have said that in the beginning of the video. My opinions could change. The trade happened 12 minutes ago, ladies. <laughs> 12 minutes ago. Um, people are saying, oh, what does that mean? Uh, Carnton Towns is running the four? Yeah. Credit Towns is basically running a four this season anyway, with Jared Vanderbilt being the five on offense and on defense. Jared Vanderbilt was in a dunker spot all season long. And while Carl Anthony Towns stretched the floor. Carl Anthony Towns is on the perimeter while Jared Vanderbilt got, got rid of these bigs, unless we were going against like Jokic or or um or Joel and B, where you need like that huge, huge body, and Cat took those assignments. But Cat has been actively playing what would be a four position in basketball this last season. He'll be fine. I promise you. He'll be fine. I'm just excited to see Rudy Gobert in a different spot. But let's talk about the Utah Jazz because a haul, a legitimate haul. Again, I said that the Bulls were interested. This is way better than a potential um, Vucevic, Kobe White, and maybe Patrick Williams and two first-round picks. I'm taking this over that any day because, again, they said that their, their objective is to retool around Donovan Mitchell and not to bottom out. The reason I said earlier that's a little bit weird because I, I would not be surprised – that Dono's excited right now, you know what I'm saying? I got some new players in. We got Patrick Beverly, who's a hard-nosed defender that's going to get people in shape. We got Jared Vanderbilt, who's a war course. His nickname is V8 for a reason. We got Malik Beasley, who can light it up. He goes through hot streaks and cold streaks. But officially, I ain't got to worry about Rudy Gobert, who it seems like I don't really like anyway. But in the year, you know, you got to admit, Donovan Mitchell, since his NBA career started, he's kind of been accustomed to being a very good um, regular season player regular season team they have been a playoff team as long as Donovan Mitchell has been in this league I could see him through the first couple months being like man I'm looking around who is my star center who is this I mean I guess they got some more deals maybe down the line but like man we missing Rudy which means that our defense is trash oh snap we're a 500 team I ain't really digging this and then eventually a year down the line two years down the line he's requesting a trade anyway I personally I would try to be proactive, similarly to what the, the Spurs did and trade him while he's at the peak of his powers, the peak of his asset, the amount of assets you could get. Because if you're getting five first-round picks for Rudy Gobert, I'm feeling good about what I could get from Donovan Mitchell. So um, they said they want to retool. Uh, we'll see exactly what that means. Um, I wouldn't be surprised if they try to potentially move Jordan Clarkson and Bogdanovich and get some dead money and get some more picks because they got – Five, four, five, four first round picks in this trade. They got a first round pick for Royce O'Neal. Um, so they're trying to get that pick equity up. And I guess that's Danny Ainge trying to do the, oh, you dig again, trying to finesse. Is this the Brooklyn Nets circa um, Kevin Garnett, Paul Pierce 2.0? Probably not. But it's a it's potential. It's a potential. And now Danny Ainge is going to reap those awards again. There's so much that needs to be said. Hold on. I actually, I actually wrote notes so I can... Um, Real, real life try to one take this, but this is not a good sign right here to have to go through the notes app um, and, and go through these things. Hold on, hold on, hold on. This is what I, oh, Patrick Beverly gave his heart and soul for a season. He tweeted when you gave Torian Prince some money and said, hey, good deal. When Cal Anderson, <laughs> when Cal Anderson got his money with them, he tweeted, love this. And just like that, he is shipped out of the dough. 
Tim Connolly, man. Heart, heartless mf huh? That boy Patrick Beverly was so excited to be a Timberwolf, and now he's got to be a Jazz. And I was seeing Utah Jazz fans saying, hey, I, I don't even know if personally – um, I can root for Patrick Beverly considering the stuff he's done in the uh, in the NBA in the last couple seasons. Jer Vanderbilt and Malik Beasley. Hear this. This is this is fun. Jer Vanderbilt and Malik Beasley have been traded by Tim Connolly two different times. Because if you don't remember, Tim was over there in, in um, Denver and he traded V8 and Malik Beasley over here. And then he got to over here and he traded them to the next team. He just don't mess with them, bro. He legitimately do not mess with them. Um, I again, Rudy Gobert, one of my favorite in the league. I have to admit that this was an overpay. Again, that's that's twelve minutes after the trade has gone down. Now I might look back on this and be like, oh, it ain't that bad. Um, Anthony Edwards, you got to carry. D'Angelo Russell was still on the team, and I'm curious about his future with the team. Now I don't think they're gonna move him now because he's the only person that could get Rudy Gobert involved offensively. It seems like you know a bunch of lobs and things like that because D'Angelo Russell is a pretty good uh, pick and roll player. Um. I, I don't think they're gonna move him this offseason. I honestly would be wouldn't be surprised if they extended him um once the season was over, not at the 30 plus million dollars that he's on now, but way, way more team friendly deal because that's what they're gonna have to do. Like I said, Rudy's on the contract, a big old contract. Carthony Towns just signed a max, and then Anthony Edwards is gonna award a max too. So you you have to do the small things around the edges. Um, Tim has a reputation of drafting well in the second round, so that might ease the pain for Minnesota Timberwolves fans at least a little bit, even though he's traded a lot of the picks that he's recently had. Um, he, he traded Donovan Mitchell. He, he traded Rudy Gobert on draft night, you know what I'm saying? It seems like he's got a knack, a good eye for talent, but also don't realize when he should keep and when he should trade away. Either way, again, as a fan that doesn't have any stake in this fight, this is an exciting-ass trade to see an NBA Hall of Famer, one of the best in basketball, yes, I said it, be moved on to his next team to team up with two other guys that are really, really good. I think that the future of the Minnesota Timberwolves could be really bright, depending on how Rudy Gobert ages, because he is already 30 years old. But with um, Anthony Edwards playing the way he has played and, and looking like he can be better, Carl Anthony Towns being shifted over to basically a new role on the offensive and defensive side of the ball is going to be interesting. Um, and I'm excited for it, man. Let me know what you think about this trade in the comment section. I swear to God, anytime I want to take a video, once I hit this button that says stop recording, I immediately think of a 30 other things uh, that I want to say. So we might do another recap later today where I give different opinions or more or, or add on to this, but I appreciate you.